Hello, and I am Michelle Little Johnson, and I am with LJ's Open Forum, and I am here today with my wonderful cousin, Chanel Grace Brinson, who is the CEO of Shine Arts Alliance, and we're here to discuss her newest endeavor, which is Let Dance Do the Lifting. I am so excited about this, and I know that this will be a wonderful success, Chanel. Thank you, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be with you too, my cousin. So I'm excited to get into um, this interview and all the important things we're gonna talk about um, concerning this project. Yes. Thank you for having me. Wonderful, and I know I've known her since she was this small, <laughs> and now she's big. She Aww. is an entrepreneur. She's an advocate for her community through dance. And we just want to talk a little bit today about her history and about Let Dance Do the Lifting. I hope you all will enjoy this. And Chanel, I know I've known you so long. I've known your parents, who are my cousins, and I'm just so proud of you. And we're going to start out with just a few questions. And I want to start by just letting the audience know how long have you been in the performing arts business? How long have you been performing? Um, well, let's stay back since childhood. Um, I adopted the name Dancing Boots when I was little. <laughs> I probably was like three or four, probably it was sooner than that, yes. um, from a long-term uh, family friend, friend of the family, I apologize, um, and she gave me the nickname Dancing Boots, and so right then I knew it was in me, and um, during the time where I grew up, I was born in the 80s, so I grew up in the 90s, so I listened to a lot of Aaliyah and um, Missy Elliott. Her creativity right. just was phenomenal. Yes. So um, it was a lot of stuff that I looked at um, during that time. So we look at it I, it's, since I could walk. Um, now, with that, me starting off, you know, just being creative and trying to find my, my angle, um, I did drill team in okay, the neighborhood, okay. and then I joined a gymnastics team in school in like fifth grade. I was just trying to find a way to stay uh, creative, and then eventually when I reached about 13, I joined the dance ministry at church. So that's okay. where I really okay. got my big break because I got it opened my eyes up to so many opportunities. Yes. Um, I've danced at the Kimmel Center three times, the Keswick Theater, the Mandel Theater, the list goes on. Mm -hmm. And it really just broadened my horizons from there. Um, then by the time I reached high school, I got into acting. So I started broadening my, my creativity. It wasn't just so stagnant with dance. I started doing acting. And then when I got to college, um, I started doing more acting. And then I ventured out to doing stage managing and directing. And then finally, <laughs> I started um, venturing out and then doing my own thing and oh, wow that I could see it I remember and I'm always seems to seem to be the person that you grab and drag me yes. into something I think right. I've, I've done probably when you were in college a video oh you, okay. yeah about your mom yes yes, yes a story yes. about your mother so that was fantastic it's just overall when you look at um being a sibling of there's eight children in your family right right just talk a little bit about the competitiveness and and the love right and everything that goes around with you all being together yes and how that creativity comes out because the creativity is is i see in all of you right but i see more of it in you but right. i do know that out of all eight of you there's some form of performing arts so just talk right. a little bit about that well uh being a pk kid if nobody knows what that is a pastor's kid <laughs> um we were brought yes. up into the church before we could even walk so with that, we were already introduced to the arts. My parents were pastors, you know, so that's where I seen the first level of entrepreneurship, them running their own church. And then um, we were the choir because we were one of eight. So we were the choir. We had to do everything. So we learned how to multitask and work together and teamwork. We learned all of that as children. And, you know, so that's how we got through. We would sing. We would dance. Um, so a lot of that came from, you know, being a part of a, a, a big family. But I think with my drive um, from a big family was because of the downside. I wouldn't say downside, but the struggle with being with a big family at a young age is not having enough resources or finances to contribute to um, my dreams and my goals and my endeavors made me want to push harder. Uh, 
we talking about hand-me-downs, you know, trying mm-hmm. to stretch mills. And then after a while, I was like, I, I'm tired of this. I want more. So, I mean, I remember at like 17, I was working like two or three jobs. And um, it wasn't something weird to do because my dad was the template. He, he was doing it. You know, he yes. did a lot. He had a lot yes. on his plate. He had a lot of responsibility, taking care of eight kids. Uh, my brother being autistic and my mom was sickly um, as a child and my dad just doing it. So he was a, a, a he was a, a role model um, to just and he was um, he was a part of the drive um, for the performer arts um, and why I do what I do. That is one of the things that I noticed in out of the eight kids, I always thought that you were the oldest because you were always pushing, 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 trying to get further, trying to do more, trying to grow. So when you look at that, when and why did you create Shine Arts Alliance? Um, so Shine Arts Alliance was originally El Niche Alliance okay. in 2009. Um, I, my mentor at the time, I spoke to him about, I pitched the idea of doing a performer arts um, company um, I was heavy into media arts during that time because mm-hmm. in high school I did a lot of um, media art. I did a lot of acting with film for Big Picture Alliance at the time, okay. and so I pitched the idea to him and said that, you know, I want to I want to have my own entity. What could I title it as? So we were trying to think of names, and I played around with my name. So mm-hmm. we called it El Niche Alliance, um, I, El Niche Art Alliance, and so um, at the time my first original first project was um, a film project called For the Sake of Jacob. Okay. Um, I never got to produce it because unfortunately um, during that time my mom had passed. So I had just put everything at a halt. This was in 2009 and I was just like I don't know. You know, it was, it was just a hard time. So, but when I got the strength to create again, I had um, I was at Temple at that point and I just started being exposed to the arts again. I did a lot of stage managing for Summer Temple's maiden stage productions. Um, I did directing at Temple. Uh, and so that rejuvenated the joy and energy that yes. I had for the yes. arts. And so by the time I graduated from Temple, Shine Arts Alliance was born. Um, I was working at Discovery Charter School and I had pitched the idea of a musical theater camp. Oh, okay. And um, I had, a, the year prior, I had I was assistant director of a musical theater camp um, in Society Hill. Mm-hmm. And I said, I could do this. By the time I was done as assistant director, I said, oh, I could do this myself. It was mm-hmm. one of those things. It was a, it was something in me that pulled out that said, the same thing that I watched the director do, I was like, I found something in me to do. And I said, I can do exactly what she just did. And so that's what I did. I pitched the idea to Discovery. They weren't ready to do it just yet, but um, a part of those board members was somebody from the city. Okay. And um, Mr. Fagan, love him dearly. Um, he's retired from the city now, but he gave me my first yes um, to direct my own uh, musical theater camp. He gave wonderful, me a building, wonderful. and that was all that I needed. Um, and I was like, I just need one camper, and then I'll just make it happen. And I think, <laughs> again, that drive that my dad always had was in me to like, no matter what you do, you can do it. You know, you just have to put your all into it. And so we wound up doing our camp. Um, and then from there, I think the following year, I uh, I went back and I said, I want the name of my company to represent what I reflect, what I do. And what I do is give children the opportunity to shine. Yes. And so there birthed Shine Arts Alliance. Wonderful. So what is the future as as an advocate for the youth, what is the future for Shine Arts Alliance? Okay, so with Shine Arts Alliance, um, right now what we're doing is we do projects quarterly. Um, I'm not in a box, even though dance is my first love, I also do acting mm-hmm. and singing. And what I found to be great is collaborations. I've been doing that heavy lately. Um, I think when I started with Shine Arts Alliance or in Elish Alliance, um, I did a lot of directing and it was things that I wrote. Mm-hmm. I wrote um, quite a few um, musicals, um, wow, with screenplay, yeah. um, and I revamped quite a few musicals as well. So I'm, you know, heavy doing that. But I think as along the time as I grew as an artist, as a director, I started to do in collaborations because I wanted to get other people's input, every people's insight, and get more people involved in things that I was creating. Um, on top of doing the musicals, I've done community festivals every year where I've given 
youth as well as adults platforms to shine, you know, um, so that you wouldn't hear any anywhere else or see anywhere else and it, give them a platform to introduce other people to what they what they bring yeah. to the table. You know, but when you look at overall, you are a CAO of a nonprofit organization and you're also a full time employed individual. There are so many people out here today that are struggling to become entrepreneurs. They also are full-time employees right. or, or managers and businesses. Just talk a little bit about how how hard, how stressful, and, and, and how you have to keep grinding every day in order to make these things a success. Right. So I always go back to my dad, and I know I can't say it enough because, like I said, he's been a template. And... You know, losing him uh, during this COVID was a major challenge. But um, he just seeing his drive and his zeal um, is really what pushed me to to do what I'm doing. Um, and seeing how he just did it all. So for me, because I had uh, adapted that same way about myself at mm -hmm. an early age, like somebody was always calling me somebody mama. As a kid, <laughs> you always act like somebody's mom. You always, because I always had a leadership mentality, and I feel like he seen the leadership in mm -hmm. me as a yes. kid, and with giving me that level of responsibility, it already came with the territory. So yes. even with you know being a CEO um, of a nonprofit organization, as well as being a full time uh, city worker, I don't. And on top of that, um, graduate school. I'm in graduate school too. Yes. <laughs> so being yes. a graduate student. I'm, I, I think the great part about it is I'm doing something that I love. Yes. And when you're doing something that you love, you don't look at it as a job. Nope. You look at it, you know, if anything, it, it um, balances me out. I think that it gives me balance. So when I'm stressed, I'm like, I can pull on my creativity. Mm -hmm. And that would, that's what centers me. And I feel like um, when you're doing something that you love to do and you're passionate about doing, you don't care if you up hours or you ain't getting no sleep, or if you, you know, it's all week, and because it's that part of you that's just exactly. on fire for it. You exactly. love it. It's the passion for it. I, I just remembered hearing um, Beyonce talk about this one time. She was in the studio. She didn't eat. She didn't drink. She was in the studio for 48 or more hours just trying to grind out that, that, that new CD, that new album. Right. So, you know, the passion they have for what they love to do, that's what they do. Right. They, they'll stop eating right. to finish a project. You know, they'll just believe that that's what I have to do and I'm going to keep moving forward till I get it done. So that's why when we started out, I said I was so proud of you because you always dig in and you make it a success. You keep it moving. You move forward. Right. You don't look back and you just keep adding and, and making it better. Right. I think what a lot of the artists... Um, People aspire to be those artists because they see where they are, but they don't see where they come from. Yes. Everything is a journey. You know, um, Indy Ivory says, says it best. Anybody that knows me know I love Indy um, mm -hmm. But she says life is a journey, not a destination. That's you know, right. so, you know, we, while we're in this journey called life, you know, there are obstacles. There are different things that may get in our path. But when you're, when you know what your end goal is, um, or what the finish line is, that's what you, you reach for, mm -hmm. you know, and you already are prepared for whatever comes. you like, look, like when people are like, when a lot of people say, that's your baby. Uh, how are you going to protect your baby? And, and they say it in a, in that way so that you can think about it. Like, how would I be with my own, my, my child? You know what I mean? Yes. I would be protective. So when I think of Shine Arts Alliance, it's my baby. You know what I mean? And if I want the best for it, I'm going to do whatever it takes to achieve those things. Because when you look at when you look at the community, and I always go back, um, even with when I do LJ's Open Forum podcast, I always talk about the community because it is one of the biggest issues in our city. We both live close to Philadelphia, PA. Right. We live right outside of the city, but we see all of the things, and that's why when we talk about Shine Arts Alliance and what you do as an advocate right. in the community. We need to see other people. So this is this is a chance for for those of you who are out there that are that are, are aspiring to do something. Start right. small and try it. Right. Because those things will help the youth in our community move forward rather than stay backward. Right. Stay in the back. And dancing and performing arts is one of the best ways for children to come out of their shells. 
and to start to talk and to see their dreams come to life. So when you look at that, with your newest endeavor, right. which is Let Dance Do the Lifting, yes. can you talk a little bit about the goals to do this and how it's inspiring you to help those children? Okay, so um, the whole idea behind Let Dance Do the Lifting came um, in June. I had just lost my, um, my father. And usually in the summertime, I'm always doing my community festivals. Mm -hmm. So with the COVID, that was shot down. And I was like, I need something to lift me. Um, and so I know that I always dig in my bag of creativity. I didn't know what it was going to come to or what it was going to be. Started off as something small. I reached out to my sister, Tree Tree. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Tree Tree, um, I just heard this Beyonce song. I just heard this Beyonce song. And I want to dance to it. That's just go in the park and do something fun. That's how I started. I said, I'll bring you on my, my niece, who's a phenomenal little hip-hop artist. And I was like, let's just let's do something fun. Mm -hmm. So outside of that, I have a core team of people that I, I and, and that's another thing. When you're doing, when you're being creative, make sure you have a support system. Make sure you have a support system. So I grabbed hold to my support system, which was my wife and a few of my friends who are always had always had my back when I'm doing projects. Like they let me be as crazy as I want to be. And I was like, I was thinking this was crazy. I was like, I think I'm trying to do too much by just going to the park. And I was like, look, whatever you want to do. And I said, don't say that because you know when you tell me yes, don't give me a yes. But that's uh, back to my beginnings. All I need is one yes. And um, all you, you know, because it, it's a lot. Um, piggybacking off of, I know I'm sidetracking, but piggybacking off of what you were saying about the youth. Yes. Um, I know as a child, what did it for me was the encouragement. Somebody encouraging me. Some, I went to go see the dance show at the church and somebody said, you need to be up there. Mm -hmm. there you go. And somebody that believed in me made me do it. Made me believe in me yes. too because somebody else did. So um, I want to encourage a lot of people to encourage the youth. You know, see the creativity in yes. them and really be their support system because you don't know if they have it at home. You don't know if um, they even believe in themselves. But it makes a difference when someone else is believing in them. That's so it true. really does. So back to let dance do the lifting. Um, so I, it started off like that. I, I grabbed to my to my tribe, and they were like, "Well, okay." And the more I started thinking about it, the more my creativity started flowing. And it was like, "You can't just it just can't be all three. And I said, "Oh boy, all right. Well, let me reach out to a few other artists that I know, mm -hmm. the few other dancers that I know." So I reached out to them. And they were like, yes. And I said, okay. Well, let me reach out to a few more. And they said yes. And I said, okay. All right. So then I reached out to one of uh, the choreographers for this uh, project, uh, Kasim Anthony Turpin. I reached out to him. And he, he, he represents one of my beginnings because him and I danced together as children uh, at church. And I said, well, let me reach out to him to see if he'd be able to choreograph. I know he lives in New York now, but... Let's see. And he I gave me a yes. Ready. yes. He gave he me a yes. And I said, you know, and that and at that point I said, mm, this is not about me. I started off with thinking that this project was just about me being mm -hmm. lifted, but I said, we need to be lifted. It became a, a we thing. Because everybody started, the way people were responding to the call. Okay. It, be, it started becoming a movement almost. And I was like, not just a few of us, all of the artists are suffering and need a lifting during this time. And not just artists, but everybody is suffering. Everybody has lost yes. somebody. Everybody has, not everybody, but some people have lost jobs. Yes. Um, people have lost something, some way, shape, mm -hmm. or form during 2020. And I said, there it is. That's the name. Let dance do the lifting. Because I, I reached back into my childhood and knew what lifted me as a child. Mm -hmm. Being able to go to that safe haven, being able to go to, it was an outlet for me. Dance was always an outlet. You know, and you know, with the children and the youth now, they need outlets, and it's difficult now because of the COVID. But they just need that push. They need that encouragement. They need somebody mm -hmm. to say you can do it. So this is LJ's Open Forum podcast. I'm Michelle Johnson, your host, and I was just here with Chanel Graves Brinson, my little cousin, <laughs> and you're gonna enjoy the premiere. See you soon. Let dance do the lifting. See ya. Thank you.